Let me start this video by quoting Tommy Kelly, the creator of the Forty Servants and the Four Devils, who writes these wise words in his FAQ to his fantastic divinatory and magical system. Are they safe to use? His answer is, magic in general isn't safe to use. Note the quotation marks around the word safe and make of them what you will. I think that will work just fine as a disclaimer at the beginning of this third tutorial video. I wouldn't post this on a platform that's available to such a wide public if I didn't think the information weren't already widely available through other channels. Just remember to be on your guard, be respectful of the process, and if you think that the claim that it's all in your head provides any kind of safety, I'll just point out that there's really nothing you can ever experience that isn't in fact just in your head. This video I made a couple of years ago explores that in a bit more detail. So, in short, do have a good few banishing rituals readily memorized, and I do mean more than just having performed the LBRP a couple of times when you were an adolescent. I don't think I've recommended any book as much and as often as Damon Brand's Magical Protection. But if this is one of the first videos of mine that you've come across, then be sure to start there. You learn first aid before climbing Mount Everest, not after. Okay, I think that's hopefully enough of a disclaimer. Let's get started with the content. There's this strange phenomenon that happens when you sit in an environment with very little ambient light and stare at your reflection in a dark, perfectly smooth, shiny surface. Your retinas aren't picking up quite enough information to build a full, accurate picture in your mind, and so the deeper parts of your brain tend to fill in the gaps for you with information it thinks should be there. The only thing is that it's not your conscious, rational mind that does the gap filling. It's your weird, irrational, emotional, unconscious mind. And so the results can be quite disturbing if you're not expecting what you end up seeing. The faces you end up seeing can appear hellish or demonic, or at least disturbing. Not always, of course, but certainly if you're in the right state of mind. Now, if you are in the right state of mind, that is to say you are in a state of trance, maybe induced by a deep meditation or simply lengthy incantations, you can communicate with what you see and even potentially make out an answer, which may be mouthed by the face you are seeing, or the answer might simply arise within you. Some people who experience clairaudience might even hear an answer, or at least have the impression of hearing an answer. This surprising effect is at the center of many of the grimoire practices which use a dark mirror. So of course the Ars Goetia from the Lemegaton comes immediately to mind, though of course John Dee also used it extensively in his Enochian form of spirit evocation, just as two well-known examples that spring immediately to mind. What particularly interests me around this practice of scrying in dark mirrors is the attention placed on the ritual that accompanies it in so many accounts. Ritual is naturally a preparation of both the practitioner's mind and also the space in which they're practicing, the two naturally being inextricably linked. I'll refer you once again to that video I mentioned at the beginning. The objective is to turn both the mind and the space into the kind of place in which the chosen entity will naturally feel at home. So let's say you're wanting to talk to an entity who's known to enjoy, I don't know, angry thoughts and the sound of scraping metal, and the third hour on a Tuesday night, as well as hearing battle cries and the sound of drums and the smell of fresh paint, well, put all these things together and the entity most likely to turn up for it is going to be that one, and not the Wednesday spirit who loves cinnamon and the clarinet. There are literally hundreds, if not thousands, of websites which will give you the information on the preferences of this, that or the other entity, chthonic or celestial or other altogether. Of course, you should be aware of imposter spirits, what Josephine McCarthy calls parasites, and be prepared to ask a few security questions before you decide to take the call. But on the whole, by preparing yourself for a particular type of spiritual encounter, you make that particular type of encounter not only possible, but likely. By the way, if you're enjoying the content and wish to support the channel so that I can continue to make these kinds of videos, if I could ask you to click the like button and maybe consider subscribing, those things really help the channel. And if you're feeling particularly generous, there are links in the description to find out more about Foolish Fish memberships, which start at just $2 a month, which allow you to watch these Saturday videos one week before everyone else without advertisements. And of course, you also get access to the Foolish Fish members-only Discord server. 
Anyway, I thought I'd mention it, but let's return to the topic at hand. You could say that the act of scrying in a dark mirror is akin to a hallucinatory state. And whenever hallucinations are involved, it's well known that the setting and the subject, him or herself, play a major role in determining what the experience ends up being like. If the practitioner is anxious or fearful, and on top of that the environment and the ritual itself are of a nature that invite more such anxiety, then the experience is unlikely to be a pleasant one. Though that does not have to mean that the experience necessarily ends up being an unhelpful one. Many of the rituals mentioned in the grimoires invoke the various names of God to bind whatever entity, so that they might not cause any mischief. Though of course many modern practices don't employ such precautions, even going as far as to see such precautions as unethical. Naturally, your decision to use such bindings or not will depend on what exactly you consider these entities to be. Now, some people like to consecrate not only themselves and the space for the operation, but the black mirror itself. And there are several excellent resources out there if that's something that you wish to do, though I would suggest that while it's a nice thing to do, and can definitely add to the space preparation aspect of the practice, my experience tells me that it's not absolutely necessary. I've successfully used the shiny black surface of my switched off mobile phone in the past to great effect. So do consider that before spending vast quantities on beautifully handcrafted black mirrors from Etsy. I mean, unless you really want to, in which case I definitely wouldn't blame you. The following instructions assume that you'll be using probably a switched off mobile phone or tablet. I imagine this will bother some, and of course I'll repeat that if you have cash to burn, nobody's preventing you from picking one of those lovely dark mirrors you can find online, and use it exclusively for this purpose. However, maybe take a second to think about Lon Milo Duquette's words relating to the Enochian Ring of Power on page 37 of his wonderful book Enochian Vision Magic. He writes, Here is the pattern for a ring that can be made out of coloured paper or poster board. I realise such material is not as impressive or romantic as pure gold. You might even think that a true magic ring cannot be made from a scrap of paper. You might tell me you'd feel silly wearing a paper ring. If you feel this way, then I hope you won't be offended when I tell you that if you can't make a real magic ring out of paper, then you'll not be able to make one out of gold. I think the same applies for most magical objects, and I definitely believe it applies to scrying mirrors. If you don't want to use your phone, but can't afford an artisanal magic mirror, you can also buy a cheap picture frame and paint the inside of the glass with black paint, or place some black paper where you would normally put a picture. That works well. Given the choice, I particularly like using a ball of black glass. Cheaper than obsidian, though obsidian is thought to have properties that keep negative energies at bay. The spherical shape of the ball helps in creating an image which is already to an extent distorted, and I seem to respond particularly well to that. Your mileage may vary. The thing that seems to make the most difference is the preparation, so take your time with this. The materials you'll need are a dark room, preferably at night, the dark mirror you'll be using, a sheet of card large enough to place the mirror on it and still have plenty of space around it to draw and write names and sigils of any protective entity of your choice, a candle unless you have a dimmer light that you can turn down so low that you can barely see anything, and finally some of you may choose to use an easel or something to prop up the cardboard and mirror, though that's not essential. I'll explain what that can be used for in a moment. So the first step is to prepare the sheet of card. Place the mirror in the center and write around it the sigils of entities that you trust. Maybe the names of the hierarchical superiors of the specific entity you're trying to call. Or maybe just some names and sigils of deities that you trust to keep you and the entity safe during the encounter. Just make sure to leave a space so that when you place the mirror on the card it's surrounded by all those names. Next, you'll need to enter that trance-like state of mind. You can easily do this by singing any song at great length. The short, sharp intakes of breath and extended out-breaths increase the amount of carbon dioxide in your brain, and that in turn helps the conscious mind to take a back seat for a bit and make way for your unconscious mind to do its thing. Naturally, a song or an incantation of the variety of the kind of encounter that you're wishing to have will be more useful than, say, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. 
Alternatively, you might wish to read at length from any given sacred scripture of your choice, if you prefer to do that. Just follow your intuition about what the most helpful things you could be saying might be, as long as you're saying them out loud for at least 10 to 15 minutes without pause. Song tends to work better than reading because the song dictates when you're allowed to take a breath. But if you bear this in mind when you're reading and take as few in-breaths as you can manage, you can easily achieve a similar result. Naturally, if you're in a situation where you can't sing or read out loud for whatever reason, then just perform the breathing exercise. Just short, sharp in-breath, long, stifled out-breath. Imagining what it would feel like to be reading out loud while reading just in your head. Swaying and shaking and softening your eye focus can help with this as well. So next, when you've been doing this for, yes, about 10-15 minutes, you'll want to dim the lights to the point where you can barely see anything. Some people find that what works best is just to light a single candle and for that to be the only source of light in the room. However, it is important to not be able to see the candle in the reflection as a dot of light. So this is where the easel can come in handy, or any other kind of contraption that can prop up whatever form of mirror you're using in order to achieve this easily, and just place the candle behind it. Of course, all of this will need to be prepared in advance, as you'll want to be able to start scrying within seconds of finishing your oration or singing. So now, just stare deeply at your reflection, not looking away, maybe for a minute or two, while calling the entity that you wish to speak to asking it to show itself in a fair shape and manner and without delay. Of course, you can add any additional elements to your ritual, including incense or music or whatever else you feel might help. And then speak. You can ask for the entity's name so that you can call them again in the future if you wish to, and they may or may not respond. So then when you feel you're satisfied with your encounter and have nothing else to ask, simply Thank your guest and tell them that as they have come in peace to now please go in peace. And you can simply switch on the light in your room and put your setup away for the next time you wish to use it. Now some people say that performing a banishing ritual immediately after having invoked any given spirit is a bit like slamming the door on them as they leave. So if you feel that you do want to perform a banishing ritual, maybe wait a minute or two at the very least unless you feel that the spirit really hasn't been as courteous as you would have liked it to be. And there you are. These are the broad strokes of all the rituals that use a shiny surface for evoking spirits. And I'll repeat one last time that if your takeaway from this video is that spirits are a trick of the mind and therefore cannot have any agency over the real world, I will one last time urge you to check out that video I mentioned. I know it might seem like self-promotion, but it's actually out of concern for your safety as you decide to give this experiment a go, or not, as the case may be. If you use dark mirrors or scrying devices in your own practice, maybe you'd like to share your practical tips in the comments below, or maybe you have some interesting stories from your own experience that you think other practitioners might benefit from. One way or another, if you've enjoyed the video and haven't hit the like button yet, please take a moment to do so, because that really helps these videos to reach a wider audience. And if you'd like to support my work further, then do check out the perks that members get by clicking on the Join button or on the link in the description. And speaking of members, let me just say a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart to all the members who keep this channel alive. I'm always incredibly humbled to see how many of you have decided that you like my work here enough to support me. It really means so much. Now, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, then of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little bell button if you'd like to see my videos more regularly in your YouTube homepage when a new one gets published. And thank you, finally, to every one of you who made it to the end of this video. Take care of yourself and of each other, and see you very soon with another video.